So you wanna be the best video editor out there on the market today. How would you go about doing that exactly? Watching more YouTube videos, going to learn from somebody, doing some extra stuff like just editing random videos. Well, today I'm gonna to talk about one thing that is super important for every editor who wants to be the best editor out there to do, and it's super simple. This type of training is super effective and something that I highly recommend for anybody who just wants to be a higher level editor and just wants to beat out all the competition. Dope. What's up everybody? My name is Danny Matthews. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about the best training that I have found for video editors out there on the market and it's not watching YouTube tutorials. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere and get into it. For reference in Premiere, my timeline is here. My toolbar is here. Here's my source panel. My project and effects windows are going to be here. Here is the effects control for that and finally the preview window. All right, first things first, what you do have to do is download a full length video that you just want to be better in. So you find a video that's really awesome that you want to edit like, or you want to be at that level of editing. Go ahead and download that video. If you don't know where to look for a good video that you may want to have reference, if you check out my last video about where to get inspiration, that is a great place to start in those locations. But once you find that video that you want, go ahead and just download it from either Vimeo or if it is on YouTube or somewhere else, go ahead and make sure you get that downloaded. And then we can jump into this next step where all you gotta do is drag and drop it into here. But once you drag and drop it into here, you can see that you have your full length video and you're gonna drag it into your timeline. So all you're gonna do is go ahead and just grab your clip, click on it, come up here to your clip, and then hit on scene edit detection. Once we hit on this, go ahead and apply a cut at each detected cut point. Make sure that these are checked off unless you actually wanna create a bin for all the sub cuts that you have made. And if you wanna actually have a marker at each detection cut point, I'm gonna say no to this because I'm gonna show you as you can see on mine that there are different markers that we're placing for a certain reason. So go ahead and hit analyze and get that thing going. Once this thing is completed, we're gonna actually go back and check to make sure it has all of the cut points that we need to have for this edit because they're gonna be very important just to understand what to look at. So we can see in here visually that they all cut pretty well. So what we're gonna do is just kinda go ahead and scrub through and see all the cuts that were made. And you can see that for the most part, this was done very well. And so you just go ahead and double check for all of these to have the cuts. So once you double check that all of this has the cuts on each clip that you need, then you can start diving in and become a better editor by actually training on these edits. So the first thing I like to do when I'm looking at these edits is to look at the pacing of the video. If you look at the pacing of the video, you can see all the clips that we have, longer clips, shorter clips, super fast clips in here. Again, we have like longer clips, super fast, longer, super fast, and then a little bit longer toward the end, slowing the pace down. So you can get the idea of the edit that you're looking at and just kind of pacing. So now you can understand how does an editor who does it more professionally than you get pacing down? How do they use music? How do they use sound? All of the wavelengths are here so you can open it up and look at every detail of what's happening. You can literally see when they cut it on what beat and you can understand timing and cutting to the beat and what that looks like and using music as an influence, as well as listening just to sound effects in here. So from that point, once you kind of get that feel, you can go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into all of this. And to be a better editor is to really understand how long is the clip on, what is the story you're telling overall, and what happens in between each cut. So in here, we would go with that understanding of what are we gonna be looking at. So on this, you can actually come in here and click on your markers that you'll place and make specific marker points. So in here, I made a marker point that was actually referenced to for every action, there needs to be a reaction. So what does that mean? So I'm really analyzing what they're looking at. They're looking at the camera and we can see that. And then on the next cut, you see them looking at the whole thing. So they're not just doing this and then cutting here. That wouldn't make sense. So for the flow of the edit, the editor chose to have them stare and make a disgusted look of, oh, what am I dealing with? Then the audience is like, okay, what are they dealing with? And they're drawn into what is their disgusted look? Well, their disgusted look is, okay, here's this crappy apartment that we gotta fix up. So we got a good view of what the problem is, what we gotta deal with. Then our next cut comes into her coming in and it starts off in this wondering looking around what can i do to make this place happen and he's like he's like yeah not gonna happen so as you continue on with this placing markers 
and just putting where the specific point is that what you're looking at. Just showing here, show past time when a not an exact jump cut. So what that means, the comment that I placed here, she's coming in, we have a jump cut and she's looking back to him and it's a closer viewpoint. So just showcasing time. So this is speeding up the edit. We have another jump cut here and you can see on my next marker I placed. Again, this is a faster paced video jump cuts. And again, we're just hitting jump cuts. So here we're coming in here where she looks over at the plant. She's staring at the plant and she's thinking. After this, we have the plant kind of livening up a little bit. And now we go into this daydream section. And so when we jump into these edits, we have each cut. And the reason I want to cut each one is to jump from each cut to look at what do they do in these cuts? What do they do in between and placing different markers? So here in my comment, I put interesting how many times they used a cut from the same scene twice. Little jump cut with different lighting, but resetting the plant. So it's just little things like this that you can take into action of even editing styles of, okay, well, well, how do they do that really fast effects, those really cool different feels. There's different things like this that we can take a deeper look at and actually take the time to understand what are they doing in these edits. So on this edit, you can see that we literally have, it, it's flashing, comes to a new scene and the flash disappears and you just have a speed ramp. And so this really complicated edit actually becomes super simple when you break it down. So you come in here and you can do a flash with a speed ramp, comes into a couple different clips with these. It's a cut, it's a jump cut with a flash with a speed ramp. Those three things combined gives you this really cool sequence. And so you can see really cool as the editor takes out of that just fun exciting fast sequence we actually come from her staring at the plant and are her coming away from looking at the same plant so we're still understanding what her eyes are looking at she looks away and comes into this scene and now this has not done anything in post besides possibly color which i don't think they did color they just switched the lighting but this is all one long clip of her taking in of okay this is possible coming into the, her room of just like, what could the future hold for us in this? And so coming into this another sequence of just fast, fun paced um, clip, same thing. Just really wanted to draw you in as the audience. And in this video, as it continues going, we're not gonna go over the whole thing, but this whole video showcases just different feelings of there was a lot happening in this apartment. It all ended with just them staring at the possibilities of this apartment location. And it's really awesome because they add in this even more human connective thing where the guy looks in, smiles, and we're looking over his shoulder of, wow, they have a kid, they have a family and he's excited too. So we went on this imagination journey with the woman, but also the man has his point of view from this. And it's just talking about being inspired by the brand. So this is just a really cool way to showcase a certain thing where humans are connecting with humans and a really interesting way of editing. So this is the best way to train in video editing and to become a better editor than anybody else. Because if you're doing this more so than other editors, I mean, maybe once a month, couple of times a month is perfect for just breaking down edits that are better than yours and really just analyzing what are they doing in here? What are they getting at? Listening to the sound, understanding the pacing, looking at what they're doing in their editing style, even little things like how to operate with the actors, how to move and work with them. If you want to go even deeper, you could even move these clips around to mix it up to create a different storyline and see why it may not be a good idea to do that or why it was actually really good because you were able to change clips to make it even better. So you can actually start training yourself in that. And the biggest thing I highly recommend is putting down these markers by using the M key on your keyboard will allow you to create these markers where you can go ahead and just implement any text. So if you were to come in here and click on M on your key marker, hit M again to open it up. You can name it whatever you want. You can change the color. You can put in comments and then you just press OK and it's going to stay there. If you want one of these longer markers, what you're going to do is go ahead and press M on your keyboard, press M again 
And all you're gonna do is go ahead and change your duration, just say five seconds, and we're gonna call this test and we make it red. Hit okay. We can see that we have this longer one. And then all you gotta do is just adjust the marker to the length that you want. I would suggest doing like one second and you can have these longer ones. Say this whole clip is a comment that you wanna have. You can go ahead and put two seconds on the marker or whatever so it covers up this marker. And then another awesome thing just when in training in these videos, if you wanna go ahead and color code what different things are here, if there's two different scenes, say there are two different actors in different locations and you want to color code that, you can actually look on your editing page in Adobe Premiere to see which ones are doing what and what the pacing looks like. And so it gives you a better understanding as an editor how to do all of these editing techniques.